What a fantastic day to be in Easton, Pennsylvania here on the campus of Lafayette. It is homecoming, but it's also the Patriot League opener. Signs around campus urging this Leopards team to black the buck out, trying to beat Bucknell, a team they've defeated 10 of the last 11 meetings, including that victory a year ago up in Lewisburg. We want to welcome you inside the Lafayette Sports Network pregame show brought to you by Coca-Cola. We invite you to experience the Coke side of life. I'm Matt Province, and soon we'll be joined by Gary Laubach and uh, Mike Joseph, also our coach John Leone. But right now, let's welcome in our guys, our uh, All-Americans, first All-American wide receiver, class of 88, Phil Ng, and of course, our linebacker, Maurice Bennett, class of 2006. Guys, it's an 0-3 team that's been in games, but how is it to be a player coming off a of bye week at this particular time? Yeah, well, there's pros and cons to a bye week. Uh, the most obvious benefit to the Leopards is the, the fact that they can get healthy and you should have no less than six players back with one notable exception and that's Zach Zweizig. Uh, secondly, that buy gives you an extra week to either forget or to dwell on the fact that you're 0-3. Hopefully, you know, this being the, the opening Patriot League game, the coaches have gone out there and hammered that fact home ever since they stepped off the field at Penn. Yeah, what I'll highlight is the mental preparation. You get two weeks to sit back, watch film on your, on your opponent. You get two weeks to sit back and practice against your opponent, you know, via the scout team and practice every day. And let's, let's face it, Lafayette is an academic institution. We have a bunch of student athletes out there running around on the field. So it gives those guys to put the papers aside, get the homework out of the way, get the exams out of the way, and just focus on Bucknell this week. Yeah, and focus on a new season. You're 0-3, but now you can throw that record out the door because the chance to be with a win right in first place of your league, the Patriot League, if they can win this game against Bucknell. For more on that, let's go down to the sidelines. We've got Gary and Mike to talk a little more about the Open. Thank you very much, Matt. One player, however, not back. Zach Swizek, our starting quarterback, will not play today. Matt, I'm sure, will develop that with the guys upstairs. Back to you guys. Well, certainly it's something to watch as both teams are without their starting quarterbacks. A huge factor in this game. Uh, but again, for Lafayette, a chance to beat a team that they have owned here recently. And they've done well in openers, 16 and 11 in the school's Patriot League history. We're going to step aside. We're going to hear about just how the loss of quarterbacks could affect this game from our experts on site. But right now, we'll go to break and get a look at a guy who's going to be relied on heavily. Andrew Zurich, a sophomore. Look at that seam route there. Last week when he came in, completed 12 passes against Penn. Now he's going to find his man, Justin Adams, one of two touchdown drives led by the sophomore getting his first meaningful action. He'll get a lot today. We'll talk more about it next, right after a break. Back inside Berger Varsity Football House in that province, filling and Maurice Bennett. And guys, as we get set for this game, interesting matchup. Two teams that have had a little bit of struggles here recently. Phil, you're the offensive guy, okay? Yeah. And, and you look at a team that is ranked number one in the Patriot League and third in the country in stopping the run. What's the key for this offense uh, for Lafayette today? Well, I think that's exactly it. I think you're going to have to come out here and basically use the pass to set up the run. Just based on the fact that Lafayette's averaged 55 yards on the ground for the last two games, and you have a Bucknell defense that's only given up about two yards you know, per carry. Um, and normally you'd say, you know what, game on. Let's have Zweizig come out, play a little pitch and catch to Ross, arguably the best receiver in the Patriot League. But now you've got an inexperienced quarterback in Andrew Zurich coming out, have a little, had had a little bit of problems with the O-line, protecting the quarterback last game. So I think what you're going to need to do early is do some max protect, keep the tight end in, keep the back in, give him a little bit of time, run some short routes, give him a little bit of confidence, and let's go from there. Well, they call him a bit of a gunslinger from his performance last week against Penn. He's got some guys, you mentioned Ross, of course, Justin Adams, Demetrius Dixon has come on, so there are some weapons there for Zurich in his first start. But now another guy making a first day, a start, RJ Nitty. He's just a freshman. Now, Maurice, I know you'd be licking your chops right now. <laughs> you'd have to wipe your mouth so excited about this opportunity. But what does the defense have to do to shut down this Bucknell offense? Absolutely, absolutely. I think today the Leopards really need to come out and they need to attack that weakness in the Bucknell offense. And if you look at Bucknell, they're ranked 150. 15th out of 122 schools nationwide in both passing yardage and sacks allowed per game. So really today, you want to come out, you want to pressure their rookie left tackle. They have a young guy at quarterback. They have a young guy at running back. You want to, you want to send as much pressure as you can to attack that weakness. And this Bucknell team has not scored in its last six quarters, has not had a touchdown in its last seven quarters. So again, the defense come out, come out here with a lot of aggression, you would think, today. All right, we're going to step aside. We'll see you at the half. We want to thank the LSN Sports Network for the keys of the game. They deliver high-quality programming worldwide via television, 
and radio, streaming video and satellite. We've got the opening kickoff. We'll bring in Gary and Mike next right here from Fisher Stadium. Inside Burger Varsity Football House, we begin the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. Remember, uh, you can see how much you can save by visiting FGIAgency.com. I'm Matt Province, and I have the two All-Americans with me as we're at half of a 21-7 Lafayette lead. And so far, so good. Phil, what on offense has caught your eye? Well, they got to the run game, obviously. It just wasn't the way we thought we were, they were going to get there. Uh, what I did see is uh, Coach got four wides out starting, got the guys out of the box, and, and got that offensive line able to push the D-line around and create some seams for Sherman. And you think about it, he only had 11 yards rushing against this team last year, and already Sherman's got 84 in the first half. But I think defense has been just as big a story as the offense. The three sacks, the you know, interception, they've played pretty well, Maurice. However, when you hold the team to 44 net yards and a half, we're talking about zero yards and some category, I mean, that's just the best half of football that we've seen out of the record. And if you are a guy who knows that your team's 0-3, but you have a chance to get to the Patriot League's first place at 1-0, how important momentum-wise to finish strong on what they've built so far in the first half? I'll tell you what, we're sitting inside of this beautiful facility here. You can hear the guys downstairs in the locker room. Sounds like they're pretty fired up, they're ready to go. So in the locker room downstairs, they clearly understand how important it is to start off 1-0 in the Patriot League. Not looking too rusty after the bye week, which I know we talked about earlier. Yeah, not too bad, you know. Just to hope we can finish a game this year. Well, that's what they're going to try to do right now. 21-7 at the half. They've really dominated statistically, only allowing right around 45 total yards of offense for Bucknell, which came in 1-2 and two with a win earlier this year over Marist. Meanwhile, you've got Lafayette trying to win its first game and snap a seven-game losing streak. And uh, Bucknell, a six-game road losing streak. So something's got to give. Right now, it's going the Leopards' way. And right now, we're going back down the other way to the field. John Leon's got a special guest on the sidelines. Thanks, Matthew. The, the sidelines. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Back to you guys. Thank you. John, we agree with you wholeheartedly, but you do get extra credit for the fact that you mentioned we've come a long way in endowments from baked goods and car washes, my line of the night so far, from our coach, John Leone. Guys, we'll be back and talk about the second half in a moment, but we'll also have highlights coming up after the break. Mike Joseph is upstairs. He's got to look back to the first half, which sees the Leopards up 21 to 7, and that'll be right after a timeout. We're at halftime here at Fisher Stadium, and keep it here to the Lafayette Sports Network. And back to you, Matty. All right, great job in the highlights, boy. It looked like number 87 there, Brandon. I thought it was Mark Bavaro carrying guys downfield. Todd Christensen, you named the tight end, but when we talk about the second half, we liked the way they were involving both tight ends in the offense. Yeah, you had both of them involved. Uh, you know, he, actually, uh, Brandon Hall had to come out, and that's when uh, that's when Donahue got his touchdown catch. So um, yeah, and in terms of the second half, you know, don't change much. Uh, you know, it's been working. Let's keep running the ball. Let's keep it simple. Uh, let's do some play action and let's do some simple play action passes. Uh, I think if, if you've seen anywhere uh, Zurich struggle is when he's throwing the, throwing the ball downfield. And uh, hopefully let's just keep it simple and, and go from there. For a linebacker, an All-American linebacker, you got to love the way that unit's playing. Kashim Hill is back. He was possessed in that second quarter. What have you seen so far from the defense that you liked and, and parlaying that into what you want to see from them in the second half? Moment? Well, just like Phil said, I think we need to see more of the same. The team really got after it in the first half of football. When you think about Bucknell, you know, they were dead last in the country in terms of turnover margin. We go out, we get a couple of turnovers in the first half. You know, they're averaging, allowing 3.9 sacks a game. We go out, we get three sacks in the first half. So good, solid first half. Let's see, let's see more of the same. Well, you're not kidding. They had had 12 turnovers in the previous two games. Bucknell had two more to that, so they have a high 14 total in their last two games. All right, we're going to go aside here, but as we go to break, before we begin half number two, one more look at the tight end. Six guys have caught balls so far for the Leopards, and here's one of them again. <laughs> Look at this wrecking ball at 6'7", dragging defenders all the way down to the 10-yard line. And then the next play, he comes out of a helmet problem. There's the other tight end, Morgan Donahue. 21-7, we'll see you after the game. Roll parts. Keep it here to the Lafayette Sports Network. Terrific homecoming and a great way to start the Patriot League opener as Lafayette takes care of Bucknell by the final of 31-7. 
And it's now time for the post-game show brought to you by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. We're going to join down in the field. We've got some uh, special guests, including a couple of stars of the game in just a moment. But guys, before we send it down to head coach, oh, to uh, head coach Frank Devani alongside of John Leone, this one it kind of got stale in the second half, but then a big run by Sherman caps off a nice day. Yeah, it was a little ugly up to that point. And actually that, that one drive in the third quarter was kind of thought, that's how I thought they were going to start the game out. Little dinks and dunks and, you know, moving it, moving it down the field. But uh, that, that 78 yard run was, was definitely the one that, that sealed the game. Sealed the game. He talked about an 18 play, 84 yard drive midway through the third quarter that took eight minutes and 14 seconds off the clock. But then we heard all about this Bucknell run defense, but Maurice, the run defense by Lafayette tonight was stout. I mean, I have to tell you, I was thankful enough to play on a couple of championship teams here at Lafayette. Had some awesome teammates, some great players, Blake Costanzo, Dion Witherspoon. But I can't remember ever holding a team to 18 yards net <laughs> rushing in one game. So outstanding performance by the Leopards today. I'm really proud of them. Uh, the yardage disparity, unbelievable, 428 to 90. All right, down to the field, John Leone's got the head coach, Frank Tavani. Thanks, Matthew, and good luck down at Princeton next week. Maddie, Mo, and Philip. Hey, I was almost going to ask you guys to do my oil. Back to you guys. Boy, John, those interviews are a lot more fun, of course, after a 31-7 victory. And I look at the offense, Phil. You're an offensive guy. You use a guy making his first career start as a college player in Zurich. You get 257 total yards of offense from us, Sherman. Ten different receivers. Where do you build from today's game? Well, obviously, you build a lot of confidence out of that. And uh, I think especially going back uh, to the running game. You know, it was something that we didn't think they were going to do very well at today. Um, obviously, the last two games, they had a hard time doing it, and they really came out strong. Um, it's got to be a confidence builder for the future um, and, and, go and going forward. So, yeah. Had some tough sledding because now you're talking about four consecutive road games, two in the Ivy League, then two back in the Patriot League. And, Maurice, you and I talked about how well the defense played, but... What today can they take from the defensive effort and parlay when you're going to have some tough games beginning with Princeton next week? Well, I mean, great victory. The team is excited. They're having a great time in the locker room. But after a game like today, you have to put it in perspective a little bit, right? This is probably the easiest test of the season in terms of the Patriot League play. Now you're going to go on to a, a four-game road trip where you're not going to get as much sleep. You're not going to have the same party atmosphere. So you got to put it in perspective, you know, take the – you know, short tackling, you know, aggressiveness, the attitude that you had today in this game, and make sure you, you know, follow through for the next four weeks. Do you find there's some weight lifted off the shoulders of the guys in that locker room downstairs after this? I mean, you can, you can hear it, you can feel it, you know, you can feel the excitement in the stands, you can look into the coach's eyes, Coach Luce was jacked before the game, Coach Devani's <laughs> having a great interview, guys are emotional downstairs in the locker room, so you can definitely feel the energy, and you just need to carry that on Eastern Coast to wherever you're going <laughs> for the next four weeks. Uh, no doubt about it. Now, we're going to see just how, indeed, this victory was built by taking a look at all the highlights. And uh, before we do that, I know Gary Lovak's going to have some thoughts of his own. So let's send it back to the booth. Gary and Mike, what did you see? Let's get your thoughts. Well, Matt, I'm going to turn it over to Mike first because it's always good to show highlights in a winning ball game. Stop by. Come on the road with us. Back to you guys. Oh, we certainly welcome the invitation, but I guess it's probably going to be close to 50 degrees colder the next time we're all together here at Fisher State. And before we go, you know that the media is going to get things going. You're going to read the papers tomorrow. And what do you do about the quarterback situation? Two sophomores, one who had the job before injury, one who's got the win. You've been on offense. What's yep. the deal from here? Well, it's really up to the coach, uh, you know, and what their philosophy is. You know, most, I think most coaches will say you're not going to lose your job, you know, if you get hurt. Um, but that's not necessarily always the case. <laughs> hey, I will say this, there's nothing wrong with having a little depth on your roster at any position. I know for us, the beautiful trophy we have here, actually our backup quarterback at the time, Pat Davis, P. Diddy, throwing a touchdown pass Lehigh game to Jonathan Hurt to seal it. So, you know, Pat Davis played great for us in, in, in a backup role he came in. Phil was an awesome starter, so there's nothing wrong with having a little depth on a roster. Yeah, it's good to know you have two guys who are certainly capable of throwing the football and using all the receivers and, and the tight ends, as it were, today, uh, as Zurich did a great job in his first career start. Guys, it will be a long time before we're back here on November 9th for the next home game. It's been a pleasure yet again. For filling, and of course, Maurice Bennett, our two All-Americans here that we uh, parade on the pregame show. I want to thank the entire crew here. Did a great job, the Lafayette Sports Network crew. Uh, terrific coverage yet again. For Gary, for Mike, for our coach, John Leone. This is Matt Province saying so long. Next week, Gary and Mike have the action from Princeton beginning at 1 o'clock. Meanwhile, we're back on the 9th. In the meantime, roll pars.